morning and welcome to worship. I'm going to get my exercise in going up and down these stairs. I love it. Everyone hear me okay? I'm playing with the mic. Cool. Um, I said to just give me the high sign if, if I drop out for some reason. It is great to be with you today. Um, my name is Kevin Tracy. I am a uh, first call candidate with Southeast PA Synod, uh, spending some time supplying throughout the Synod as I wait for a first call. Um, and actually, I grew up at New Hanover in Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania, so it's nice to feel kind of like I'm in my old stomping ground again. Uh, the altar flowers are given to the glory of God in loving memory of Margaret and Will Stevens, presented by children and grandchildren, and our chancel flowers are given to the glory of God in honor of the birthday of Matthew Stever on March 16th, presented by parents Brian and Donna Stever. Please rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also Please be seated. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 to 4 1. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord in his way, my beloved. Please rise as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from St. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me, listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and the children are dismissed for the children's message. Let's play the imitation game. Can you act just like the items that I'm gonna show you next? Okay, stand up, get ready, make sure you have enough space, and let's go. Let's start with an easy one. Can you sway like a tree, blowing in the wind? Stand nice and tall, sway back and forth. Good job. Ooh, let's be an airplane next. Tilt your arms side to side as you glide through the air. Awesome! Hey, now let's try to hippity hop like a bunny and much, much, much like them too. Oh, what fun. You guys are great at this. Ooh, next let's be an elephant walking with big, heavy footsteps one at a time. <laughs> Gotta raise that trunk and let that elephant trumpet roar. Go for it, guys. Ooh, lastly, let's be a shark swimming in the ocean to and fro. Let me see those fins. And maybe some shark teeth gotta start chomping too. In today's Bible reading, Paul encourages others to join in imitating him. He goes on to say that there are many that live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, their glory is in their shame, and their minds are set on earthly things. As we grow and learn, it's natural to want to imitate others that we see, but it's very important that we think carefully about who or what we choose to imitate. Imitating the wrong people, making the wrong choices, or doing the wrong things can obviously get us into a lot of trouble. Lucky for us, we have God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit on our side. So when in doubt, just pray it out and have a great week, everybody.
Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. So I have to admit that even in spite of the rather uncomfortable and maybe death-centric nature of our gospel reading today, it is arguably one of my favorite texts to preach on. Mostly because we get one of the more unique and probably my favorite image of Jesus. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Jesus as a mothering hen, gathering the children of Jerusalem under these arms of protection. Now, a confession. I have a bit of a reputation amongst my friends as just a little tiny bit of a mama's boy. But to clarify, not in the unhealthy way. Like, I know how to cook, I clean, I buy my own clothes, I do laundry. I'm just really close to my mom. So while I was in seminary, all of my friends knew that I wouldn't be free Sunday evening after 8 p.m. because that's when I call my mom every week. My mom is probably the coolest person I know and is definitely the kindest person I know. So this image of Jesus as a mother hen makes a lot of sense to me. Now, I know that everyone has different relationships with their moms. Not everyone has the same gift that I have of a loving mother. And yet, whether they are our own examples or not, there are stories that we all know about the sacrificing and protective love of a mothering figure. Now, I would not dare to be the preacher that shows up to a Lutheran church and asks y'all to talk in church, but just think about it. I want to encourage you to think of whomever it is in your life that you have experienced this type of love from. Maybe a grandparent, a friend, a teacher, a supervisor, or a stranger you passed on the street that did something unexpectedly kind for someone and you will never see that person again. You don't have to share, don't worry. These stories surround us, these images and moments of sacrificing and protective love are woven into the world around us. And while I'm not going to ask you to share right now, after worship, if you're comfortable, feel free to share whomever it is that you thought of with somebody that you trust. Now, I have my own examples, of course, and since I'm the preacher, I am prepared to share right now. So one of my absolute favorite photos in my parents' house is from when I was probably five or six. My whole family had taken this rafting trip, my dad, my mom, my brother, and I. And I don't remember much of the experience, but every time I walk through my parents' dining room, I see this photo and I'm reminded of all four of us in that raft. Now I am at the very front of that raft with my arms flung wide, the biggest smile on my face, having the time of my life. Which would be totally great and wonderful, except the boat was surrounded by chaos. There is water splashing up over the side. My dad is in the back, holding on with one hand, trying to hold my brother. I don't think anybody was expecting the rapids to be this crazy. And I am just at the front, free as a bird. Now my mother, my poor mother, is in this photo, launching herself forward with worry across her face, reaching out for me, her foolish, foolish son who didn't quite get how dangerous these unexpected rapids could be. Now, obviously, everybody's fine. We all made it. I didn't fall out of the boat, I don't think. But I love this photo so much because it captures perfectly for me how my family operates. I am still the one who is at the front of the boat, not a care in the world, and my mom is always there protecting us, protecting me and my brother. It isn't just, though, these people that we know and see. Love abounds in strangers we may never meet, too. In people we pass on the street and in those war-torn places around the globe. And I'm sure many of us have seen some of the images coming out of Ukraine. And I do feel, as the preacher, that it is my job to talk about some of these things. 
It's photos of families fleeing and fighting back invading forces, or buildings destroyed and hospitals burning. They are difficult images to see, but as we talk about love today, as we hear about the way that Christ loves us, a mother's love, we can't turn a blind eye to the reality of the world around us. Jesus calls us to love, and that means we are called to care for the world around us, too. I came across a photo the other morning as I was reading a news update, something I try to limit myself to doing once a day. And it was a photo of a woman. Her hair was tangled and messy. She had dirt streaked across her face, and her arms were wrapped around a young girl. The woman was looking down at this young girl with a powerful smile and had wrapped her in her arms so tightly. It was a posture and a smile that conveyed protection and warmth, a smile and an embrace that reminded that little girl that somebody was watching out for her. Somebody was protecting her. It was the comforting arms of a mother hen protecting her brood. The photo caption then went on to clarify that this actually wasn't the woman's daughter. It was just a young girl who couldn't find her mom, and a stranger saw her and wanted to take care of her. That is love at its core, love as Christ has taught us, made real and made known in the midst of terror and heartbreak. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I have desired to gather you together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. In our gospel reading today, Jesus has this conversation with some Pharisees who have come to warn him that there is danger ahead. They tell him that King Herod has it out for him, that Jesus has been ruffling too many feathers, kicking up too much dust, causing too much of a stir. He's on Herod's list, and Herod's list is deadly. This is the Herod that, Je that beheaded John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. Herod that was notorious for murdering anybody that could be seen as a rival to his throne. Herod who killed his own sons to protect his power and his title as king. And now he has his eyes set on Jesus. So these Pharisees come to warn Jesus, telling him, get out of here, go, hide, protect yourself. If you go to Jerusalem, you will die. Stop reaching for the foolish kid at the front of the boat. Grab the side, Jesus. And instead, Jesus says, no, I'm walking into it. I see Herod the fox. I see the chaos, the destruction. I see the rapids around us, but I also see my children. And I will not abandon them. Jesus uses this image of a mother hen, this powerful image of sacrificial and protective love to describe his love and care for his children. In the face of the danger he is facing from Herod, Jesus extends himself in care and compassion for his people. Our gospel story tells us a part of Jesus' journey and ministry his words foreshadow what we all know will come. We know that Jesus will die. And if this is a spoiler alert for you, I'm sorry. Jesus dies at the end. But he doesn't stay dead. Jesus will be killed and mocked for his status as prophet, but we know that Jesus' death and resurrection, the great mystery that we are preparing for in this season of Lent, is love incarnate. It is love made real. It is a mothering and sacrificial love that transcends everything and reaches out to each one of us. Jesus, the incarnate God, is a mother hen, the embodiment of fierce love. There is nothing that can keep God, that will keep God, from gathering us in and holding us close. This is a ferocious love embodied in Jesus. And in the face of a world that feels like it's going up in flames, Jesus comes alongside us, gathers us up in mothering arms, wrapping us in protection, and warms us with a smile, reminding us that each one of us is a beloved child of God, loved, cared for, and celebrated 
for exactly who we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. Apostles' Creed. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith, sharing together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Prayers of intercession. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, you create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughts, thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, 
Receive our prayer. You raise up leaders committed to love and justice, nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the good, common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You hear us when we cry to you, attend to those expecting a child, and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Com comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving, especially those on our prayer list. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or, co or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers and confirmation leaders and parents who share their faith with young generations. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us. With them in your loving arms, merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Thank you for your continued support of our ministry here at St. Paul's. Your offerings are greatly appreciated and enable us to reach out in witness and service to the community. Let's take a moment now to ask God's blessing upon our offerings. God of love, you call us beloved children and fill us with your grace. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Please be seated. Before we do the um, ending part, uh, we're just going to switch a little bit, do the announcements here uh, for the sake of the flow. Um, so there are midweek services at local churches through the Upper Perk Yeoman area. Be sure to check with each church. Um, information is in your bulletin. Uh, we are in need of volunteers for our worship assistant ministry, which I think is what you did today, right? Fabulous. Okay. Yes. Fabulous job. First time I heard. Couldn't tell. Um, truly amazing. Easter flowers will be sold this year. Um, there's a form. Uh, oh, there's a form in your bulletin. Fancy. Uh, and there are more forms in the narthex. Um, and there is apparently a full announcement sheet located in the narthex for your convenience. I'm assume that y'all know where that is. Awesome. I mean, the, I know where a narthex is, where the sheet is. I'm Lutheran. I know where a narthex is. My friends, receive this benediction. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ for whom we wait. Amen. Go in peace. Christ has come. Thanks be to God.